Okay, so today we're going to take a look at logging into an Adobe Connect session. In other words, joining a live lecture or the same principles apply when listening to a recorded lecture. But before we get on to the actual um, process and, and looking at the setup for, for logging into Adobe Connect, um, there's just one important area I want to look at which is um, headsets. As you, I'm sure you'll notice, I am I'm wearing a headset today, and uh, the reason I'm doing that is to, to demonstrate how effective they are in use and engaging with Adobe Connect. So, on the topic of headsets, and um, when we talk about a headset, we talk about a combined he set of headphones with a microphone boom attached. They generally refer often referred to as dictation headsets, and um, they're not meant to be high fidelity or used for listening to music, they're specifically for, for interacting online to a large extent. Um, the reason why we're talking about headsets today is that basically you cannot log in to and interact with an Adobe session uh, unless you're, you're wearing a headset. The headset lets you hear the lecturer, presenter and the students very clearly in the room. Having the closed off head, uh, headphone set means that you can hear everything that's happening in the room. If you're listening on a laptop, on a set of laptop speakers, y you're going to miss most of what's going on in the room. You'll find it difficult to hear the lecture because typically speaking, laptops have very poor um, speakers built into them due to the physical size. Uh, if you have a, a desktop and you're using um, external speakers, then you'll probably hear it better. If you're just wearing headphones, such as the kind of headphones you use with your 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 iPod or your iPad or your your phone, and um, you'll hear it quite clearly. But for the purpose, of, if you want to actually interact properly um, with the system and be able to talk and interact with the class and the lecturers, then a, a proper um, headset with a, a boom microphone and what we call a noise cancelling microphone is the ideal thing. Now today, for instance, um, one of the reasons we use the headsets also is that it prevents feedback and background noise. If you're using open microphone and speakers, it will pick up everything that's happening in the room, you know, the football match on the TV, or the kids looking for something, or just people moving around in the next room. Uh, for instance, I'm at the moment sitting in, in the, the, the server room of, of the college, and um, over on my right hand side is a, a bank of, of computers and servers, there's fans running, there's a humongous amount of noise in this room, in, in fact it's very difficult to think in it. But you may be hearing a little of it um, coming through the microphone, but the vast majority of it have been cancelled out in favour of just my voice. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Now, um, basically, please do not use an open microphone and speakers because everything in the room will come across. So when you do go to speak at a lecture, they will hear everything else that's going on around you. So I can't overemphasize how important a headset is. It, it's close to being compulsory if you want to interact with, with the lecturers. Um, it'll be very obvious if you're not using a headset when you log in. Um, it'll be heard, you won't be able to be heard clearly, and there'll be echo, there'll be background noise, and perhaps even you'll get feedback from the speakers and the microphone together. So please, please invest in a headset. The one that you're looking at here is, um, and it's the one that I'm wearing at the moment, is the Logitech um, USB stereo headset. Um, you can get these in curries or you can order them from Amazon they set you back somewhere between 25 and 30 euros um, which is a kind of a mid-range price for this kind of, of um, headset you can buy far more expensive ones and you can buy cheaper ones now we're not saying that you have to buy the Logitech but we do know that it works very well we do know that it has good sound quality from the point of view of speaking and, and listening um, you can of course try, if you have a headset you can try it, if you have a cheaper headset you, that you would like to try, by all means we will be setting up test rooms that will allow you to, to test your equipment. But this one we know works. As I said, Curry's or Amazon. Okay, so with that out of the way. Okay, so we run our Adobe Connect Diagnostics. We know that our system is set, ready to go, that our browser is able to engage with Adobe Connect Lectures. We have our headset plugged in. So let's log into a live classroom and see what the experience is like. You will find a link to your live lectures for any particular night during any particular week on the student portal, which is where you'll find just about everything you need in terms of 
of your study over the academic year. So I'm just going to log in here. Go to the module that you're, you're studying on this particular night, and we'll say it's this particular module which I'm using for demonstration purposes. And when you arrive to your module, um, you will find the link. The link could be in one of two places here. One, it could be in a special section on live lectures, um, which is usually at the top of, of the, the topic outline. And you will find a, a link to the lecture. In this case, the one we're dealing with here is called the Adobe demonstration. Um, you may also find it in the session or the session that you're, you're studying for that particular week. You may well find it's in both places. And sometimes you will be emailed details of, of logins on a particular night as a reminder. So let's um, click and log in and see what happens. So initially we're brought to a, a secondary link, which is the link, the direct link to the Adobe Classroom, the live classroom. So we click on this link again, and this brings us to the the, the login or entry page for the actual um, live lecture. Um, here you'll be asked to enter as a guest. So it's important that you put your full name in here. This is so that the lecturer can see that you're logged into the session and that you can be marked as being um, present at the session. It, it also will help other students see who's talking or recognize who's talking um, at any particular time during the class. So now we just click, once we've entered our name, we just click on enter the room. And what this will do now is start up our Adobe Connect plugin, which we installed earlier during the diagnostic phase. This plugin opens up a window on the classroom. So what you're seeing here is exactly what your classmates see on the projected screen in the class during a, a lecture. Um, the camera, the webcam, the view which you can see here on your top right hand side, puts you in a student view, the same view that students have when they're in the classroom itself. Um, before we look at um, the process of engaging with the class and, and how we do that, that there's a, a couple of basic tasks we have to complete first. First of those is, and this is essential that you complete this task every time you log into a new class, and because it's different for each um, class you log into, we must run what we call the audio setup wizard. So if you click on the meetings tab at the top right hand of your screen, you will see the option to, to log on to the, or to, to click on the audio setup wizard. Now the audio setup wizard is going to help you test whether you can hear through your headphones and whether your microphone is working correctly before you actually start to engage with the class. So it opens up the, the wizard and we click on next and it brings us to the first part of the test which is testing whether our headset is working and whether we can hear and um, what's going on. So we click on <laughs> You should when you click that hear uh, music in your, your headset indicating that it's, it's working correctly. The next part of it is testing the microphone. Now, you're, you're given the option to select the microphone that you want to test. The reason why this might come up is that if you're using a laptop in particular, which may well have a built-in microphone, um, you will have two microphones to use, one, either the one that's on the, the laptop or the one that's in your headset. You must use the one that's on the headset. The microphone on your laptop is an open microphone and will pick up noise from all around the room and that from, from, from adjacent rooms and any noise that's going on outside even. So it's important that you select the right mic. In this instance, there are two. The USB one is the one that's on, on the system here, and the, the one that's selected is the one that's on my headset. So we're going to work with this one. So we click on Next, and here we, we can record a short piece of text just to, to make sure that the, the headset is, the microphone is working correctly on the headset. So we click on, on Record. You should immediately this is your first log first time using the system you will be asked um, to allow the camera microphone access from, from Adobe Flash Player it's important that you do that you allow this if you don't you won't be able to use your microphone or use a webcam if you have one during the session so click on allow now that we've allowed that we're ready to go and you can see as I'm speaking um, the blue line moving up and down indicates is a visual indication that the microphone is working correctly. If we click on stop, and then you can play back that recording, and you will, you will hear that recording. Now that we've allowed that, we're ready to go. And you can see as I'm speaking, and you can play back um, what you just recorded to make sure that everything is working correctly. Once you're happy with that, you can click on next. 
And the final part of his testing silence, the idea of the testing silence is, is to balance any background noise in the room with your actual voice. And it, 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 what it does help do is eliminate background noise. So we click on test silence and we stay quiet during this period. So with the test complete, we click on next and we it finishes our audio setup and we see on the top of their audio setup successful. It tells us the current status, the microphone volume is at 100 and the silence level is very quiet in the room that I'm working in here so there's no um, further adjustments required and we click on finish. Now we're ready to go. Our headset is working correctly, we can hear, we can speak. So let's move to the top of the screen here to look at um, how we then interact with the class. You will see um, your speaker symbol and it will generally be green. That's to indicate that you can hear and you should be able to hear anything that's going on in the room at the moment. Uh, as you can see, the room is empty, but um, generally you'll be able to hear what's going on in the room. The, the next symbol beside that is a white one and that's to connect your audio. It's white because it's not in use at the moment. When you click on this, it will turn green. So let's click on it and it turns green. Now you can see as I'm speaking, there's a little graphic sound wave graphic coming out of the, the microphone. This is a visual indication that your microphone is functioning properly. It's important to note, however, that as I'm speaking, um, the people in the classroom can hear me. So the etiquette is that when you're not engaging with the class, that you keep your microphone muted. This way there will be no background noise interfering with what's going on in the class. Um, you do that by just clicking on the green symbol again, and you'll see a line runs through the microphone, and it's now in the mute. So it's now muted. You can unmute it by clicking on it again. And we we'll just do that to show you it works. Click once and it's unmuted. Click again, it's muted. So for the majority of the class, your, your microphone will remain muted. This will ensure that there's no feedback or unnecessary noise in the class. If you want to speak, the etiquette again here is that you raise your hand to, to indicate to the lecturer that you'd like to contribute something or that you'd have a question to ask or that you'd, you'd like to um, maybe comment on something else that's been said in the classroom. You do that by clicking on the raise your hand here, which is set status. When we click on this, it raises our hand in the classroom. So I can, I can show you that very quickly by showing you the lecture screen. So this is the lecture screen here. This is what comes up on the projector screen. One person has raised hand and the name of the person that has raised their hand. And so you're then allowed access by the lecture clicking on approve. And what happens then is that your microphone becomes active automatically and you can join in. When you're finished contributing, it's again, as I said, good practice to mute your microphone so that other people who are contributing can have a clear line. So that's the basic functioning. You'll always be able to hear what's going on and you can contribute by activating your microphone as and when you'd like to speak. But please remember to raise your hand if you want to contribute. This keeps um, the one person speaking at, at, at a time, which is only polite, I suppose. Um, so let's have a look at the rest of the, the setup here and what we're looking at. So in the top right hand corner, you'll have um, the video feed from, from the classroom. And here you'll see the, the lecture. Sometimes you may get views of, of the class as well. Um, the second um, pod, as we call them, underneath here is the attendees pod. Here you'll see the various people attending. In this case, there are two attendees, one of which is the lecture, which would be down as ICAS1 there, you can see it. And the other is then um, myself as we're logged in here. And you can see that uh, the symbol here for the microphone has a red stroke going through showing it that it's muted. This means that the, the lecturer can any stage look up and see if somebody hasn't muted the microphone. What he likes to see here is that these are all muted except for the people who are speaking. Um, this, the next box down below is the chat one and this is a text chat box. This allows you to, um, without disturbing the class, chat to, to fellow students who may be online, maybe to comment on something or to ask a question of them. It can also allow you to, to communicate directly with the lecturer um, through text if you're having difficulty with your sound or perhaps if your headset's not working or you don't have a headset. In the main center of the screen, then, you will see the slides from the PowerPoint presentation, in this case, being presented by the lecturer on the night. Um, this may also contain other documents, um, PowerPoint, aside from PowerPoints, there may be PDFs there with information on it, or um, 
the lecturer may share his screen and show a video or perhaps go to a website and show you some some other um, resources so whatever's going on in the class will come up on your screen here at home allowing you to see exactly what's going on in the class in the same way that that students who are physically attending the class can see it that about sums it up except for the fact that there's, there's one other um, button that may crop up from time to time is that the lecture may allow um, you to communicate using your webcam as well as using sound in which case he will enable your video and we just do that here now to show you how that looks so when we go back to our screen we can see that we have a new symbol here and this one is for our webcam and we click on this here it brings up a webcam so initially you'll be the only one able to see the picture so you can check to make sure that the hair is okay and that your, your pajamas are straight or whatever it is you happen to be wearing and you click on start sharing when you're ready to share your picture this then when you start sharing and you turn your microphone on and um, not only will the students be able to hear you and your lecture be able to hear you but they'll be able to see you and this can sometimes help with communicating or if you have something that you feel that uh, your visual presence would help so that's about it and we will be revisiting Adobe to look at some more specific functions, but for the moment, you should be ready to go and get started and engage with the class. Remember, if you're having any difficulties or you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact the, the IT department and we will try and sort out any issues that you have. Until the next time.